So Anna, if I asked you what is the most popular question we get about the Dominican Republic, what would you say it is? So we get a load of questions from you guys, mainly what is it like, how does it feel, mm -hmm. what to expect, that kind of thing. So in this video, we really are going to be answering those questions for you. Early 2022, what does it feel like, what is it like to be here on the uh, beautiful beaches here in the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. By the way, if you happen to be new around here and this is the first video you've ever watched, my name is Anna and Trevor is behind the camera. We are the Delightful Travelers. We've been here in the Dominican Republic for a few months now. Go back and watch our other videos because we've got lots of content. So if you're wondering where we are, we are in a town called Cabarete. It's absolutely beautiful as you can probably tell. Kite surfing is very popular amongst many other ocean water sports. Right behind me you'll see a resort and there's quite a few people here given everything that has been going on in the world. I'm sure you all know what we're talking about. However, about a month ago it wasn't this busy here. It was kind of just us. We kind of had this place to ourselves. So we do expect it to get busier as we get into the months of 2022, but it's really interesting to see people coming back. So just to elaborate a little bit on what Trevor was just saying, for months now we pretty much go on a daily walk as part of our daily routine to walk along the beach. And as we come along here, usually it's like there's a few chairs scattered around and a few people, but we always comment on how quiet it is up until this week and it suddenly got inundated with people. You can probably see them all behind me. So the holiday season has pretty much just wrapped up and we're right into the new year now. And I think that's why there's so many people here. Yeah, think? I think this is maybe one of the busiest weeks of the year, busiest yeah. couple of weeks. We're told that getting into like mid-January, it'll start to go down a little bit, but I not a so. ton. <laughs> but that January and February are really the highest points of tourism and people coming here here's, throughout the year. Here's the thing, we're gonna be here for the next three, four, five, we don't even know how long, a lot of months. So if you wanna follow along and hit the subscribe button, you're gonna find out because we'll be documenting the whole thing. We're curious if it's going to be a little less busy around here as well going forward. One of my absolutely favorite things about this beach is all the kites which are laying on the beach here. <laughs> yeah, there's always lots around. I think a lot of people are learning this week too, so I'm slightly hesitant, not maybe not hesitant, but slightly nervous about getting hit by a kite, but <laughs> thankfully it hasn't happened yet. Hopefully it never does. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to kind of keep an eye on them. You do, yeah. There's quite a few out there, but I think all the way, if you guys can see that, there's a beach down there called Kite Beach. There's definitely more down there. Yeah, there always seems to be, so I guess it's aptly named Kite Beach because all the kite surfers seem to go down that way. But we'll make our way that, there as we walk. By the way, Trevor, when are you going to start kite surfing? Uh, I'm going to keep thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of what I'm talking about. You'll be walking along and then there's a kite coming in, so you have to kind of maneuver your way around, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they can't see it, but there's lines everywhere, yeah. so you have to wait for the lines to be out of the way. So we just found this log to sit down on. Very convenient because we're already a little bit tired after walking for quite a long time to be honest. But we need to talk about the elephant in the room and that of course is COVID. Yeah, the pandemic. You guys, as I already said, ask us lots of questions and obviously that's a big one that comes up is what, how are things here? Yeah. This changes obviously very, very quickly. So as we film this, Canada and the US are like full of Omicron at the moment. Every, very. Everybody's getting sick it sounds like. Um, here, cases have been going slowly a up, but bit. like nothing too crazy yet. Yeah. Of course, that could change tomorrow. The we biggest thing knows. though, the biggest thing is hospitalizations. They are still down even with numbers going up and that seems yeah. to be a common thread so far with the whole Omicron that's, business. That's a good thing, indefinitely. But in general, uh, I know we've talked about this a lot in the past, but one nice thing about being here, other than, you know, it's hot, we're, out, we're outside all, all the, the time. time. So that's something that makes us feel definitely a little safer than if we were at home in the cold in Canada, stuck inside, we're yeah. inside all the time. Here we're outside all the time, even if we go to eat somewhere. Everywhere. We're outside, outside. We don't think we've even stepped into a restaurant. Like, also, that's, that's enclosed. <laughs> I just want to mention, even that aside, COVID aside, it feels really good to be outside mm -hmm. all the time. It's good on the mental health. It is. And I, the other thing I would say is that one thing, people don't really talk about it a lot here, so at least you're not like constantly concentrating yeah. on COVID, 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 and being really nervous 
all the time about it. It's just relaxing in that sense. But yeah, it comes yeah. up in conversation here and there. But in general, it's not in front of your face all the time. <laughs> it's, so it's just a little it, bit of a peace of mind, I guess. It's kind of funny. When we first got here a couple months ago, it wasn't a topic at all. And then, of course, what started to happen around the world with the Omicron uh, variant, we started to, well, it came up more down here, but it's really just like, in our case, Canadians talking about what's happening in Canada back home. So just keep that in mind. I think the biggest thing is just not on the news all the time. It's just not right in our faces, but of course, we're always staying safe and being careful. Don't worry about that. We know it's there, but it's just nice to not have it in our face all the time. So let's talk a little bit about what the current rules are as far as COVID goes at the moment. And of course, if you're watching this months or even weeks down the road, things could change very, very quickly. So please look it up before you come here. If you are flying here at the moment, you do not need a negative COVID test, but you could be randomly selected once you arrive at the airport for a test. You also do not need to be vaccinated, I don't believe, in order to, but I think coming from Canada, you might need to be vaccinated in order to fly. I haven't quite kept up with the rules with that. We're not in Canada at the moment. Just because you don't need a vaccine to get in, uh, if you're going off a resort, you need a vaccine card in order to enter a lot of places, including some restaurants, supermarkets, banks, that kind of thing. Anywhere where you really go inside, they're supposed to be asking you for your vaccine card, so be prepared and have yours ready. Uh, masks are required in any indoor place, like especially I find supermarkets are probably the strictest, but in restaurants, especially when you're indoors, outdoors you're not required to wear a mask. We just made it over to the start of Kite Beach and you can probably see all of the kites that are out there. There are so many, but look at this. So this point is kind of neat. There's a flag here. Oh, there's Anna. <laughs> so yeah, we love walking this beach. We pretty much do it every single day. When you're here, if we look this way, you can see Cabarete Beach and it just looks incredibly long and just it's very active right now with the kite surfers. But the other way, there's another beach just behind all the kites that you see in the air on Kite Beach. Oh man, this is, this is just pure perfection. How amazing is this? <laughs> it's funny that when we first got here, I think it was uh, November, Every time we walked over here, there were never any kites. We had a hard time figuring out like what the proper wind was and everything. But lately, in the past few weeks, there's been a lot of kites as soon as you come around that corner. And it's just so pretty and colorful and it's really fun to watch. So another thing we get asked a lot about is safety here in the Dominican Republic. Do we feel safe? We actually did a video a few videos ago where we went on a road trip. We drove. That's definitely one of the scariest things to do here. And one of the things you need to be the most precautious with is driving. It's kind of the wild, wild west. There are rules, but no one really abides by them, but go back and watch that. But just in general, we, we tell you to, to abide by, the, I guess, the same rules that you would at home in your own country. Know what neighborhoods where you're going into, do a little research beforehand, be precautious with your stuff. Don't just leave it on the beach bed and go swimming, because it's likely to get stolen. But that could happen anywhere in the world. But in general, you feel very, very safe, especially our personal safety, we feel very, very safe here. All right, we worked up an appetite. You guys all know us. We came over to a place called Mojitos. I think, oddly enough, we've never filmed here before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's one of the most popular places in town. Pretty much everybody talks about it. We had uh, Mojitos, obviously, and some good food, and I'm starving. So if you don't know, one of the most appealing things about Cabarete, the beach here, is just sitting in the sand here at a table. You can see the beach behind me. There's not too many places around the globe that you can do that. I mean, it's tables right in the sand this close to the water. We haven't experienced a lot on our travels, so we just find it really unique. We got a soda water to wash it down. Don't worry, we got a little uh, bucket of beer. What's one big grande large beer here, but I just quickly wanted to talk about service. Since we're sitting down here now, we're putting in an order. The service here has been a little bit slower than usual, so just make sure you're thinking about that when you get here. Everyone here in the Dominican Republic went through a pandemic as well. People are just starting to come back, so it's getting busier again. So because of that, I think some of the service industry here at the restaurants is just taking a little back. They're thrown off guard. They're not used to this many people again. So service has been a little bit slower. Just make sure you cut them some slack. Funny little observation for you, and I don't know how many people will appreciate this as much as we do, but we drink a lot of sparkling water. Like we have our fridge stocked with it. We drink it more than just regular flat water. At home we buy like cans of soda water, but it can sometimes be hard to find, really, really oddly enough. And at home in Canada too, when you go to a restaurant and you order sparkling water, often the only thing they have is like big things of like San Pellegrino or Perrier, and it's really, really expensive. Here, they have Canada Dry. Funny enough, we don't have bottles like this at home in Canada, but they have Canada Dry in these bottles, and you can get them in any corner store, any restaurant, pretty much everybody has them, and it's like less than a 
two dollars, I think, maybe a dollar fifty or something like that for this in a restaurant. So our lunch has arrived. We just got a sandwich today, and we're splitting it just because we're not super hungry. But look at this guy. You can see the lettuce, but on here is some ham, two different kinds of cheeses. There's a Danish cheese and a gorgonzola cheese. The bread looks nice and fresh. Let's give it a try, shall we? Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, the bread is nice and warm. It's toasted ever so slightly. The ham is pretty good. It's not the best ham I've ever had, but what really stands out on here is the gorgonzola cheese. It's like in the blue cheese family, so it's a little pungent. It's got a bit of a kick to it. Rounds out with the Danish cheese as well. Bit of onion, cebola in there to add a bit of spice. Perfect little lunch in the afternoon, especially when you're just sitting here on this beautiful beach, feet in the sand with all those views. I know whenever we do anything or talk about anything or go do something, uh, you all guys always ask us how much did it cost, so I'm going to answer that right away. This sandwich is 300 pesos, so just over 5 USD. We, it's a fairly large sandwich, so we split them. We find most places here in Cabarete, portions are relatively large, so we often end up splitting stuff, which obviously makes stuff way more affordable if we're not buying two main meals. So yeah, this is basically a lunch that we're going to spend about $10 in total for. And what about the cost of living in general? Right, the cost of living in general. We actually did a whole video on the cost of living. If you're wondering about accommodations, apartments, living, eating, all of the things, groceries, we answered all of those questions in the previous video. There are hundreds of kites out there right now. I honestly can't get over what I'm looking at. We haven't seen this many kites yeah, I know. so we, far. We just went to lunch and then when we came came back to the beach, or on the beach, we walked on the beach, it's like, whoa, there's Holy literally moly. hundreds of them. It's I can't cool. get over it. This is one of our favorite things about Cabarete. It's just so colorful out there. There's so many kiters. Some of them are absolutely amazing. Lots of people are starting to learn. It looks like a lot of fun, I have to say that. It definitely looks like fun. Maybe we'll try it, probably not. But maybe, <laughs> you never know. Never say never. Yeah, so guys, we just want to say to you, it's 2022. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year, by the way. And thanks for sticking with us for the last two years. It's been a rough two years. Let's 20 hope 2022 is going to get better. Yeah, but uh, it's been great. This community we have here, all of us, including you guys and us, is absolutely amazing. We love reading the comments all the time. It honestly makes our day. So I just want to say thank you for that. And we hope you continue to follow along in 2022. We got some big plans. Yeah, speaking of following along, I think in the next couple of videos, we'll still be sticking around town here. Yeah. Stuff in Cabarete. But very, very soon, in the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be going to the most requested slash recommended place that everyone has told us we have to go. So that's By really soon. Far. Feel free to guess below, but I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many hundreds of people have told us to go to this specific area in the Dominican Republic. So we're excited about that. Yeah, so much fun stuff coming up in the next few months. Too. And if you got this far in the video, Trevor Anna, Delightful Travelers, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you got this far, it probably means you like it. That really helps us out, it gets the video out there. Leave us a comment, hit the share button, tell your friends about the Delightful Travelers. I mean, we yeah. appreciate it. And also, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We are on the road to 100K. Oh my Lord. 100K. Slowly but surely, we're going to get there. I think we can do it, but we can't do it without your help. All right, guys, that's it. From Cabarete, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.